So here we are back as developer one, and you'll know, recall developer two created um, a repository with a project in it. So what developer one is going to do is check out the project from version control from GitHub, and you know any additional developers would do the same. So we check out the project from GitHub, and um, there it is listing the demo two repository within our organization's domain. Um, I guess that's the only repository this particular user had available, otherwise you might have to actually select it from a list. Um, putting it in the normal Android Studio projects area, um, whether it's called demo or demo2 or something um, is not going to make a great deal of difference. Let's stick with demo2 and clone that. And it says, we've checked out um, this project. Do we want to open it in Android Studio? Well, yes, that's kind of the point. And because it has um, intact within it this build.gradle file, but doesn't have the um, .idea directory, it's treating this as an import request. And we'll say, yes, let's use the default Gradle wrapper. Let's um, import it into the idea directory um, and so we'll say okay do that and um, again um, as in the previous video there's an ID internal error that has to do with our um, just my demo situation um, but additionally when we import this thing it says we've got this unregistered VCS root so version control system um, this demo2 is under git but not registered in the settings so we can go ahead and we can add that as a uh, a new root a new thing that should be version controlled um, and at this point um, if we look in our um, project area um, there we are as usual um, we can for example look at our our layout activity main.xml um, and you can see this is the boilerplate that says hello world. I'm going to pause a moment and um, before we start developing some improvement to this project, um, doing our first you know, feature item that, that our um, project management calls for us to do, um, I'm going to look at this from a version control standpoint. So if I click on this version control area, um, you can see right now there are no local changes, no files that have been changed, um, but not committed, and that's not surprising. If I click on the log area, right now there's just one version, just one committed version, and that's shown by this dot here. As we develop additional commits, um, they'll show in here as well. And this initial commit you can see was done by developer two, whereas notice we're logged in as developer one. So you can already see we're in a collaborative environment. Um, and it's tagged with these three different labels over here, head, master, and origin master. The master and origin master labels um, indicate that this commit is currently um, the, the tip, the most recent commit on the master branch as that's known locally and also the master branch as we know of it on the origin server which is to say GitHub. And of course it's not surprising that if we only have this one commit it would be um, the tip of that branch. It's also currently our only branch. Um, head labels this as where we're actively developing. What we see um, shown on the screen is the version in the um, head commit. And if we make any changes and um, uh, do a new commit, that commit will build off of um, the head commit. Um, the head is, is going to be the tip of whichever branch we've currently got checked out. Um, since we only have a master branch, um, it's not surprising to hear that's the one we've got checked out. But if you want to see that, that's 
kind of hiding down at the bottom of the screen. There's a little um, pop-up menu you can select a branch from. And right now it says that it's the, uh, the master branch is the one we've got checked out. Um, that um, selector can also be used for other branch operations. And in particular, we could use it to create a new branch to develop our feature in. And I'm going to do that because we've got a rule we're going to follow, which is we never, never, never do any development work in the master branch. Um, we never change any files in the master branch. And in fact, we'll also never change any files in any other um, developer's feature branch that they're working on. We'll always just work in a feature branch um, assigned um, for us. So developer one um, might have been assigned the task of um, improving the greeting. And so we'll have a new branch that's the improve greeting branch where we're going to work on that one uh, user story of improving the greeting. And so we'll click OK and you can see now this same commit is at the tip not only of the master branch but also of the improve greeting branch. Um, but um, you can see down here it's in its role as um, the tip of the improve greeting branch um, that it's checked out to us. So if we do any further commits, we're going to progress down the improved greeting branch. We're not going to progress down the, the master branch. We'll leave that um, alone, which is what we want. So um, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing that might be sensible is just a refactoring step where we say, you know, having this greeting hard-coded in the layout is a bad idea. I'm going to select that. I'm going to do um, option return or alt enter or whatever it's labeled as on your keyboard and do an extract string resource. Um, call that the greeting. And so now it has at string greeting and meanwhile um, in the um, you know, if we were to go, go look in the strings.xml, um, you would see that it's got that string extracted. Um, you'll notice both of these files are now color-coded in blue. That indicates that they've been locally changed, um, not committed into the repository at all. And we can see that also in the local changes um, tab that these are, are, are uncommitted changes. We still just have the one commit. At this point, I would pause normally and test my refactoring, make sure that everything still works just as it worked before the refactoring. That's the whole point of a refactoring. Easier to work with, but no functional change. And once I'm satisfied that things are good, I would go ahead and push uh, a commit that reflects this refactoring because it's a, a kind of a logical breakpoint in my work. And so my commit message could just say that this was a refactoring. And you can see it's committing the two files that I changed. I don't need to specify an author. That's only if someone other than who's logged in really was the person who did it and you want to record that fact that you're just acting as their secretary. Um, but that's, that's not normally needed. So we'll go ahead and commit, and in fact, I'm going to commit and push. I'll just make that my general habit, that whenever I commit anything into my local repository, I also push it to GitHub. The only, you know, if you try and keep your life simple, the only reason why you would ever commit without pushing is if you were temporarily working somewhere without an internet connection. You could still commit changes and push them all later. So we'll do the commit, and it says it's going to push it, from the improve greeting branch to a new um, improve greeting branch on GitHub. That's what the plus sign means, is that's new, and it's on the origin, which is to say on, on GitHub. So yeah, that's the kind of pushing I want to do with these two, two files in it. So we'll go ahead and we'll push that. And you can see down here the master branch is still unchanged at the initial commit, whereas my improved greeting branch, both locally and on the origin, has moved to this 
um, refactoring commit which developer one, so me as developer one, um, did. So that's good, that's what we would expect. Um, you know, we could keep working. Um, the next thing to do would be to actually improve this greeting um, according to what the user story tells us. So if our client has told us they want grammatical correctness, comma, and lowercase um, might make sense. And we could, um, again, test that that change really is as we like it. And then we could commit it. Um, so um, maybe we'll say the commit message is that the greeting is as specified in user story. And we could commit and push that. And you can see, by the way, that when I'm, I've already committed and I haven't yet pushed until I click push, that my local improved greeting has moved forward. The one on the origin hasn't yet. When I do the push, then the, uh, the version of that branch that's on GitHub is also um, moved forward. So speaking of GitHub, um, let's go take a look at things on GitHub. I'll go into Chrome and I'll go to GitHub and um, to my organization and um, in particular to this Demo2 repository. And right now it's set to the master branch and um, if I were to look at anything in there, it would just be as of the initial commit. Um, if I switch branches to the improved greeting branch, then I can see that, that some stuff's been more recently changed. Um, I can also just click on this thing to see about the, uh, the branch. There's another way of doing the same thing I wanted. Or I can do compare and pull request. Or here's something I really like. You just get a list of all the branches. So if I click here where it says two branches, I've got the master branch and I've got this improved greeting branch. And here's something really important to see. The improved greeting branch is two commits ahead of master and zero behind. It's not that master in the meantime evolved further um, because of some other developer's activity. We're always going to check that and only do a pull request um, if we're strictly ahead of the master branch. And um, I'll show you later what to do if, if that's not the case. But because we're strictly ahead of the master branch and because we've successfully implemented our feature, um, we can open this pull request. Um, here we could put any comments that, that go beyond just which use story, user story we implemented. Um, we could, um, uh, if, we, if we were keeping our tasks to do in the GitHub um, issue tracker, we could put here something like closes number one and it would indicate which issue we were closing. Um, I don't have anything particular to say, so I'm just going to create the pull request. And at this point, this pull request is um, visible to all the developers on the project, and they can all review it. They can all take a look and, um, uh, you know, see if um, they uh, like what we did and approve what we did before it gets merged into the master branch, because we only want good working code um, in the master branch. So I'll show that in the, um, the, the next um, video.